device. I don't know when I have done that. I'm blonde. So there should be sound now. Hi. Is there sound? <sighs> Lila, why does it ever not work? Yes, is there sound? Okay, there is sound. Amazing. Finally. Let's just cut the start of this live stream at the point of where I say, hey, there is sound. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I always mess up with the screen, with, with live streams. It's just not my forte. Let's keep it at that. I always run into one or two issues during it. Uh, so yeah, I just uh, wanted to do an impromptu live stream, not really known to people outside of my moderators that I told that I was going to do this. So yeah, I just went to Scotland for like five days, which actually turned into six because my flight back home was cancelled, which was amazing, as you can imagine. Yeah, but I just wanted to come on here and tell you all a little bit about my trip and my experiences in Scotland. And uh, first of all, let me just say I got extremely lucky with the weather because when I was checking the weather before I went there, there should have been a lot of rainstorms and heavy weather, heavy winds. Like it should have been wet the entire time. And honestly, I've had like three small drizzles the entire time. Three small drizzles. And every time it rained, I was inside. So I didn't get rained on. I went to Scotland and even bought a super tiny umbrella that I could like fold into like this size and then unfold into like a massive umbrella. I haven't used it. Like, why do I buy things that will make my life easier and then end up not needing it? What? So, yeah, uh, let's talk a little bit about my trip. I uh, woke up last Thursday, really early in the morning, drove myself to the airport, because I'm a big girl now with a driver's license. And, uh, yeah, took a plane that was already an hour delayed, which was amazing, as you can imagine. Went to Scotland, arrived, everything was lovely, had a stroll through the city. I uh, actually walked up to Edinburgh Castle, but unfortunately it was completely sold out. Like there were no tickets for that day, and that was actually the only day I had time to go to Edinburgh Castle. So I haven't even been in Edinburgh Castle. That means I have to go back, as you can imagine. So after that, I went to the Magic Department, which is a small pub in the heart of Old Town in Edinburgh and I actually created my own alcoholic potion from like a potion script and everything like there was a sheet of paper that told me how to brew the potion like a spell sheet which was lovely and I actually had to make my own potion so I haven't really set up everything for the stream, because like I said, it was very impromptu and I just set everything up to like be able to do the stream. And uh, I'll just send some pictures my own way so that I can uh, show them in the during the stream. So let me just collect them real quick, because I just want to show you a couple things that are fun. Yes, I drank cider a lot. Just have to say that. I drank way too many ciders. And they were all just extremely lovely. Loved it. So let me just uh, collect some pictures to show to you guys from uh, my, some of my uh, travels. Oh my god. Why do I take so many photos? Why am I like this? People, tell me to not make this many photos. Also, yeah, I still have the nail polish. I dip my nails. I also actually bought two rings that are on the side table on the other side of the room. I'm sorry, because I have a cat on my lap, so I just don't want to stand up at the moment. Um, I went to uh, see Rachel, actually, from 
Inside Dot Archaeology. She used to be Rachel Amoon Diggs on uh, YouTube, but yeah, we met up on the first night and we had a lovely drink and then we had dinner together, which was just absolutely lovely. She was so kind in real life. Like, I knew she was a really nice person from the video calls that I've had with her, but in real life, she was even more kind than I could have imagined. So if you like archaeology and you like history and you're also very much into like movies, like Tomb, uh, not, not Tomb Raider, <laughs> wow, Indiana Jones and stuff, you should definitely check out Inside.Archaeology here on YouTube because she's amazing, she makes lovely content and I highly recommend checking her out. So just to have said that because I don't want to forget that I want to say that. Um, I'm also still working on the photos, sorry. Like, I'm, I'm a bad girl. I wasn't really prepared for any of this. I just decided, ah, I'm gonna do a live stream because it's a Wednesday and I don't have anything better to do, apparently. So, yeah, just wanted to come on here, talk to you guys. Okay. I've sent myself some photos, so now I can make a new scene. Oh my god, like, oh, sorry, just disappeared on me. Um, yeah, let me quickly do this. Uh, I'll be gone for a sec, but it, it's gonna be fine. It's, it's, it's gonna be fine. So yeah, um, let's open up the photos. No, oh, I need like a new browser. I definitely need a new browser for this. So, open in browser. Open in browser. Like I said, guys, I suck at this. I suck at live streams. It's been known. That's why I don't do them very often. Because honestly, it's not good for my blood pressure. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm stressed the entire time. And all I can think about is how boring I must be for everyone. Just, you know, seeing me, hearing me talk. Can't imagine that's any fun. But, yeah. So, okay. Okay, I got some photos. Yay! Look at me. Um, one day I'll be stream queen, okay? One day. One day. Oh, shit. Ah. Ah. Okay. So, let's see if this works. Yay, it works. All right. So now I just have to make sure that this isn't too big because currently it is. How's that? No, that's not any better. So it should be more like this, and then e, e. All right, all right, we're getting there. We're getting there. One day, one day I'll be good, good girl with streams. All right, one day. Okay, look at me. Did it, bam. Like, as if I've been doing this all the time. So, like I was saying, <laughs> This was uh, at the Department of Magic, the pub, in the middle of Old Town in Edinburgh, which was a lovely place to be. On the left, you have the ingredients for my alcoholic beverage that I had to create myself from a spell sheet. And on the right, you have a shot, which I probably shouldn't have ordered and shouldn't have taken. If I'm going to be completely honest with y'all, uh, it was straight whiskey with Baileys and Malibu. Completely straight. Like, there was nothing else but alcohol in that shot. Three types. Three types of alcohol. And it was strong. Really, really strong. And it flew to my head. And yes, there's smoke in the in the bottle and there's smoke in the chest. I just took the picture a little bit too late. So most of the smoke already evaporated that came out of it. So it's still a bit contained. So sorry. Um, the drink on the left was delicious. Like it had some whiskey in there, but it also had some honey and some blood orange and orange. And it was wonderful. Like it... It was just lovely. So later that night, I went to sleep, as one does. Honestly, I mean, don't we all need 
sleep at times. And so the next morning, I went to Glen Co. in the Highlands. It was magical. I booked a day tour through the Highlands all the way to the northwest, to Loch Ness. And the Highlands to me have been extremely magical. So I went there on Friday morning, I had to wake up really early, sat in a tour bus with a nice group of people and we went off to the Highlands. So first stop of the day was near Calendar, where Queen Victoria and her husband used to go to when they went to the Highlands. And Calendar was a lovely small town. I didn't really go into it because we only had like 15 minutes there. I had to pee and I also had to call my sister to let her know that, hey, I'm alive, I'm doing well, I'm here in Scotland. So yeah, I think everyone understands that. You know, you can't see everything that you want to see. And uh, after Calendar, we went and made our way to Glencoe, which is all the way to the west of the Highlands. It's not too much north, it's really to the west. Glencoe is actually where um, James Bond movie Skyfall was filmed, mostly, and uh, Harry Potter scenes from especially the first movie were filmed in Glencoe as well. So here you can see another beautiful scenery from near Glencoe with beautiful mountains. Like, you don't think these mountains are high when you see a picture like this? Well, let me tell you, they were high. This, this, this photo really, really doesn't do these mountains just as none of my photos do. Because the mountains were just absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous, but they were also very high. And not in the sense of high, high. You know? These mountains don't do drugs, all right? They were just very tall, that kind of high. For me, like, I'm Dutch, so I would use the word high instead of tall. Saying my, hearing myself say high this much, it just sounds like I'm talking about mountains doing weed or something. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> it's not doing me any good. Mm. So, Glencoe is breathtaking, as I said. And um, let me quickly fix another screen here, because otherwise it's just not going to work. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this is much better. Hi, I'm back. Let me put myself like this again. Oh, hey, one day I can stream. Like, actually, one day it's going to fit. I'm, I'm going to master streaming, live streaming one day. I am very sorry, people. Today's not that day. <laughs> like, honestly, it, today's not going to be that day. So let me put this a little bit lower. Like, I have some stuff behind me, but that's fine. You can see the cat better now. Who doesn't like to look at a cat? I don't even know if weed is legal in Scotland. I don't roam in those spheres. Just no idea. So, hi, I'm back. I uh, have cat. I showed you at least a couple pictures. So, yeah. So we went to Glencoe and then there's this small white house in Glencoe that is adorable and it's between mountains. And I actually took a picture of that. But that's not the picture I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the scenery surrounding that picture. Like... To the right, there's this small white cottage, this house, and this is their view. Just let that sink in a little bit. Like, these mountains are extremely tall. Just so just let it sink in that you wake up every single day. And when you look outside, this is what you see. Like, this is just a fairy tale. This is a fairy tale view. Honestly, this is an absolutely breathtakingly magical fairy tale 
view. And as I stood there, I only had like 10 minutes on this spot. And as I stood here, I couldn't take my eyes off of these mountains and the entire scenery. And I took um, some small videos and, of course, pictures. And I will be creating a YouTube short slash TikTok slash Instagram reel with my travels and some video stuff. So, yeah, you will see all of it. Just not yet, because nothing is prepared for this live stream. I decided I was going to live stream maybe two hours ago, and I was still at the gym while I made this decision. So, needless to say, <laughs> we're just going to have to accept the fact that I don't do well on all of this. But yeah, that's just what life is. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Like, I'm still in my workout gear. I have my ponytail in my hair, which I really, really, really hate because I hate ponytails and they look weird on me. And oh, it's just, mm. But it's fine. I have a cat and I've got you guys watching the stream. So, I mean, we're doing all right. Yeah, we're doing OK. So after Glencoe, we made our way north. And when we went north, we quickly Went through the small town of Fort William. Lovely town, haven't seen much of it. I blinked twice and the town was already behind us. So it wasn't really a big town. Uh, took some photos from like the bus, the bus view, as I call it. And um, let me respond to a text real quick and then I'll be completely back. Um, so after that, we made our way north. So we're still in the west coast, but we made our way north. And so we went to Fort Augustus, which is on the southern bank of Loch Ness. Now, we've all heard about Loch Ness and the Loch Ness Monster. I didn't see a monster. It was very disappointing. No, that's just... <laughs> Didn't expect to see a monster. Let's be frank about that. Like, honestly, I'm just going to be honest. Of course, I didn't expect a monster. It would be lovely to see one. But yeah, I mean, just like I said earlier with like mythical beasts and stuff. Just I wish that they were there. But unfortunately, they don't exist, which is bad. So let me see if I can put this uh, it's just not going to be better than this all right well then that's unfortunate but I'll show you me on the banks of Loch Ness why is it working wait what mm. oh yeah it's here hi I'm blonde so yeah this is me at the banks of Loch Ness on the southern bank Near Fort Augustus, there was this small uh, restaurant called the Boathouse or something. Wait, let me just situate the cat better because she's just not working with me at the moment. I'll show you. This is what I'm working with. This is cat. I left for like, you know, five and a half, nearly six days. She doesn't want to let go of me. She just doesn't want to leave me alone. As you can see her face. Her face is like, I'm never letting you leave ever again, woman. You stay home. All right? Like, this is just, her nails are in my back at the moment. Like, she's not going to let me go. So, cat. She's probably going to be like this for the next two hours. Because usually I stream for about two hours. Don't ask me why. I'm an insane person. I like insane things. But yeah. Lila sleeping. Chilling, putting her claws in my, ouch, my back. Wonderful. Back to the picture of Loch Ness. Yes. So, me on the banks of Loch Ness near Fort Augustus. And Fort Augustus was a lovely place. I had a lovely meal there. Of course, I drank a pint of cider because I drank a pint of cider at nearly every stop. I had more than 30 minutes to enjoy myself, because I can drink a pint of cider without ice in about 20-25 minutes. So, yeah, and I like my cider. I'm currently actually drinking a cider. 
So, um, really, Ezra, Kayam, my cat's gonna eat me if I die alone with it? I got food in the house that she can actually get to really quickly and really easily. And she just doesn't because I actually feed her enough on time. But if I die, then there's at least food for like the next two or three months. And by that time, my body will be found and it'll all be good. This cat ain't going to eat me. This cat adores me. All right. Okay. Good talk. So back that we uh, back to my, my, my trip and my travels and all my beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. Actually drinking a cider right now. It's a Copperberg cherry. I import these. They don't sell them here. I'm very mad at the Dutch people that they don't sell them here. I actually have to import them. But it's really, it's a good cider. So, after Fort Augustus, we went down south, back into the middle of the highlands. And we made a quick stop at Pitlochry. I thought that, you know... Before this trip, I thought Scottish villages were lovely and quaint. My absolute favorite Scottish town is Pitlochry, without a doubt. It was so wonderful there, and the people were so inviting. And of course, I had a cider. Mm -hmm. That was my third cider of the day already. Yeah, I drank a lot of cider. Because that's what I do when I travel. I drink ciders. And uh, it was lovely. Of course my cider is cold. Like, you see? It's like icy ice cold. Couldn't be colder. So, yeah. And um, Pitlochry was wonderful. And then we went down south back into Edinburgh. And that was my first day tour. It lasted for 12 and a half hours. That's a long, long time. And you want to know the best? The next day, I had another day tour that took about 10 hours. Hi, baby. And um, on the second day tour, we went mm -hmm, for the first stop of the day to Pitlochry. I had no idea that I was going to visit the same real quaint town twice in two days. So I had like an hour to spare this time in Pitlochry. So it took me a bit longer and I enjoyed myself and it was lovely. And on this day, I went to see some glens and a waterfall. I didn't select the picture for the waterfall. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, I'll actually fix that right now. Like I said, like I wasn't prepared for anything today. Do you want to go down? Okay, you want to go... Oh, but then... oh, Get your nail out of my back, honey. Yeah, you're hurting me. I wasn't hurting you. You were hurting me, honey. She's a bit schizophrenic. She can be like super nice and then super angry within like a blink of an eye. It's fine. I don't care. That's just who she is. She's never going to change. So, yeah, if you can't handle seeing any of that, not my problem. I've known her for, like, nearly nine years now. It's fine. She was born on my hand, and she knows that I will protect her. Always. I'm not seeing the pictures from the waterfall. Ah, here it is. Wow, Kaylee, blonde. <laughs> Very blonde. All right. Pictures from the waterfall that I saw in the middle of a lovely forest called the Hermitage, if I'm saying that correctly, with like the pronunciation, uh, in Dunkeld, actually. So, yeah, let's open that picture in my browser for you to see. All right, here we go. And now I can actually show you, bam, waterfall, woo! Everyone, look at that. It's a waterfall. I forgot the name. Like, it's okay. I know that schizophrenic doesn't mean unpredictable. 
like I know Henrik. Uh, it's more like she um, has um, more than one identity, to be completely honest, and uh, she just, you know, switches from one to the other in less than the blink of an eye. And she was actually hurting me with her nail in my back, and I tried to get it out, and that took too long in her mind. And uh, so, yes, yeah, she got mad for a moment, and now she's just sitting on the floor washing herself. Like, it's fine. I don't care about that. Like, I'm used to it. I've had some scratches in, back in the day, so that's fine. But yeah, these beautiful waterfalls, they are lovely. And they were incredibly loud. Like, I understand that waterfalls can be loud, but they were, like, deafening loud and quite massive. So, yeah, th th to me, the waterfalls were like one of the highlights of the day. And then we went to Pitlochry and it was wonderful. It was lovely. Had a great time there. And after that, we went to the Queen's View. Let me see if I brought a picture from that. Like, Klee, did you do your job right? Did I do my job? Nope, didn't do my job. <laughs> Let me fix that real quick. Let me find the picture of the Queen's View. This is my favorite picture of the entire trip. Let me just have to tell you. This next picture that I am going to be showing you in about 5 to 10 seconds, depending on how fast everything works, because it's not always working. So, this... is Scotland to me. This is just, this is breathtaking. Honestly, this is one part of the view that you see from a point that's called the Queen's View, just outside of Pidlochri. This changed my entire perception on Scottish nature. This just made everything more magical. I took videos at this point, like you can all, you see the mountains going up to the left already? Those mountains go up higher and they're all forested and it's beautiful. You don't see that from this view. I won't show you the other view yet because honestly you're just gonna have to watch the TikTok slash YouTube short slash Instagram reels depending on which platform you prefer for like my Scotland trip video but this view just I mean part of this view is currently the banner on my phone like I can show you that real quick. As you can see, not sure if it's too bright, dark, whatever, but that's the Queen's view from the picture that I just showed you. And that is my phone, my wallpaper, and I just fell in love with that. And we have Lila back. Like I said, she doesn't hate me. She just doesn't like me for two minutes gets mad and then after that she's just gonna be like woman I need cuddles come yeah you can do it yeah, I know I know it's okay I wasn't mad anyway you know yeah I mean I don't I don't ever get mad at her when she does it like it's just a thing that she has she can't help it oh you're stuck again are we gonna do this again Okay, okay. You're unstuck now. Wonderful. Amazing. This is why I like to wear simple t-shirts at the house. So that if she ruins one, I don't really care. You know? But yeah, so back to my trip. After the Queen's View, we went to a whiskey distillery. Because when you're in Scotland, you have to drink whiskey. And I did. 
So I went to Aberfeldy, the whiskey distillery, and it was awesome. I actually paid another 10 year, uh, pounds to drink a dram of whiskey straight from the casket. Yes, that's right. When you drink whiskey straight from the casket, let me tell you, it's a lot stronger. And not, not just a little bit. No, 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 no. Straight from the casket, the whiskey that I tasted was at 64% alcohol. 64% alcohol. Let that sink in. That was insane. It was super strong. Didn't need to cough because, hello, I'm a pirate. My nickname for many people here online is pirate. So, yar, har, har. I drank a dram of whiskey straight from the casket without needing to cough because I can handle it. Cask, casket, what? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm Dutch. Like, I make mistakes straight from the cask. Fine. Like, it's nearly the same. So, no, I don't need to, my nails clipped back. They were created like this. I grow out my own nails to like the length I prefer. And then I go to a nail salon and ask them to do fun stuff with it. So, my nails are the perfect length for me to type and live. And they don't need to be longer and they definitely don't need to be shorter. I have male-like hands. They're not very feminine or anything. My nails will make my hands feminine. Thank you. All right. Loving what people telling me what I need to do with my body and my life. Love that. Just absolutely love it. Sorry for the mm, but yeah, no. It's as if I'm going to tell a man what to do with their body and the way they look and the way they dress. That doesn't make any sense, honestly. So... <laughs> Just for the person typing that, think about that for a second. If a person on the internet would just randomly tell you what you need to change about yourself, you're going to be like, huh? Who the hell are you? What? Why? Why, are you, why do you have this opinion of me? Thank you. All right. So, rant over. Back to my fun story. Since I was the only person that tried the whiskey, the dram of whiskey straight from the cask, I actually got a free glass with me. So now I have a whiskey glass in my house. And uh, it was lovely. I have uh, a token for that moment. So, yeah. The day after that, I'm not sure if people know this, but the day after that was on Sunday, because like I said, I went there on a Tuesday. I did the Highlands Glencoe. Loch Ness tour on a Friday and I did the whiskey tour to like the Queen's View and all that beautiful stuff on a Saturday and then on Sunday I went on an Outlander tour. I went to film locations where they filmed parts of the TV show Outlander. Now people, if, if, if you know me a little bit Outlander is my absolute favorite TV show of all time. I don't necessarily like all the nudity and all those scenes in it. Like usually, honestly, I skip those. Not my forte. If I wanted to see things like that, I would probably put on something better. Needless to say, it's in the show. It's fine. Usually I go to the bathroom or just skip it. Doesn't matter. It's the storyline that does it for me. And the storyline of Outlander is phenomenal. And the way they act everything out and the way the movie, the, 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 the TV show like presents everything, it's just the best. I've rewatched Outlander about five or six times already. Currently in season six, because in the Netherlands we're always a season behind for like a whole year and sometimes even more because I'm busy as well sometimes so um, yeah I did the Outlander tour 
I saw some of the locations where they filmed part of the show and to me that was magical. I saw Lalibroch, the, the home of Jamie Fraser. I saw the place that was a stand-in for like Fort William. The real Fort William was burnt and, and, and destroyed and taken down more than 150 years ago. So that, of course they couldn't film there, but they used this other place that they filmed Fort William scenes at. Um, the tour was lovely. We had about 10, 10-ish hours to see all these locations. And all of these locations that we went to are in the Kingdom of Fife, which is north of the River Forth. There we go again. Like you got Edinburgh and then the River Forth. And then you have above that the Kingdom of Fife, which is still Lowlands, Scotland. And uh, yeah, that was magical. It was incredible to see these locations with my own eyes. I took videos there, of course. And they will be in the TikTok video as well as a separate TikTok slash YouTube shorts, whatever video, uh, which just shows everything from the Outlander tour. So I'm slowly making my way over the British Isles. I went to Devon in November of 2021. I must say, yeah, I'm saying that correctly. I went to Devon in 2021 and in London. And last year in April 2022, I went to Devon again. And now, July 2023, I went to Scotland. So there will be me one day in Ireland, in Wales, and on the Scottish Isles. Maybe someday in Far, far in the future, I will make my way to the Isle of Man. Who knows? Like, it might, I might, I might not. I, I, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm slowly taking over, conquering the British Isles. What do you think about that? Hmm? What do you think about that? Your, your lady that feeds you and loves you every day, slowly taking over the British in the Irish and the Scottish Isles. Hmm? Yeah, I like that too. So, this was one of the best trips I've had. And it was honestly perfect. And then on Monday I woke up, had a nice relaxing day, had a bit of a stroll through Edinburgh, and then on time I made my way to the airport and this is where things go south yes oh thank you david david thank you so much for the super chat that's so kind of you uh also for the people that asked me if i cut my hair no it's in a terrible ponytail because i came from the gym about less than two hours ago so yeah i just decided on an impromptu live stream and i just decided to not take a shower and dry my hair and do my makeup uh, it was just a bit too much if i wanted to start early so this is me in my everyday attire i just put on some lipstick and said to myself you know what this is gonna be fine people will just accept the way that i look every day instead of me doing my extreme very best for a video thanks so back to the story monday i um made my way to the airport. I arrived at the airport around 6. 6 p.m. local time. My plane was supposed to leave at 7.45 p.m. When I arrived at the airport, my plane was already delayed to 9.15 p.m. No information on why or, or just, just nothing. So, I make my way to the gate around 8 30 so 45 minutes before the flight was supposed to leave i stand at the gate in the speedy 
boarding line because, you know, I paid that little bit extra because I'm sitting all the way in the back. I always book a seat all the way in the back of the plane. Like in the last three or four rows, you will find me because I don't like to sit in the middle and I definitely don't like to sit in the front. I want to sit at the back. I've watched too many air crash investigation documentaries. And even though, like, if the plane goes down, it will go down and you might not survive. But for me, sitting in the back just heightens my chances of surviving. Don't tell me. Don't ask me why. Like, this is a feeling I got from all, watching all those documentaries when I was a kid. It's fine. That's my superstition. So I was standing there, there with, like, the first five... I had, like, five or six people in front of me. So... We get to board around 8.45 p.m. All the non-speedy boarding people were just rushing in front. So, I mean, I was just standing there for another 10 minutes. Like, why are they going already? Even though I paid to go for this speedy boarding so that I don't have too many people in front of me while I have to walk all the way to the back of the plane. But that's fine. The people on the ground floor, floor people eventually like had them stop and then the speedy boarding could go through. So I made my way to the bottom of the staircase. I was like on the bottom five steps-ish. I had people in front of me and people behind me. We stood, at least I stood, on that staircase for nearly an hour. No information. So like I said, we boarded around 8.45. It was already nearly 10 by the time that we finally heard something, and that was that the plane was delayed too much, and that they missed their time slot to land at Amsterdam Airport, or as I would call Schiphol, or Shithole, because it is a shithole, but that's fine. Um, the captain was trying to... Um, get a new time slot, all these weird nothing telling, no information things that they said. Wonderful. And if we could make our way back up because boarding just got cancelled. After we already stood there with like no toilet, nothing to drink, just nothing for an hour. So we went back up. And there was going to be new information at 10.15. 10.15 rolled around, it was quiet. 10.30 rolled around, it was quiet. 10.45 rolled around, it was still quiet. No information, just nothing. Just me sitting on the stone flooring of an airport because all seats were already taken. If you know me a little bit, you know that my tailbone got removed back in 12, 2012. And I also got ankylosis spondylitis. So that's rheumatism, for those that don't know. So this was really, really, really rough for my body, and of course my mind. So at 11.15, there was still no new information. And we were still sitting there, and I had already been at the airport for more than five hours at this point. And then around 11.15, 45 p.m., we got word that the flight was cancelled. We weren't going to take off. So they had us sit there for many, many hours with no information. <sighs> so yeah, that was fun. So of course I had to arrange a seat for the flight the next day because I had to go home. Hi, I can't stay in Scotland. I understand that Scotland wants to kidnap me. Oh, there's been a cat hair on my nose and ooh, it's itchy. Layla, why you do that? But yeah, no. So um, I got myself a seat for the next day by the time I left the airport because they actually sent us out of the airport. Like follow the exits and they were walking along with us to make sure that we were actually out of the airport. We couldn't stay in the airport according to them either. Like, that's fun. It's close to midnight. I'm in a different country. 
I was traveling alone. Almost everyone on my plane had like a travel companion, their partner or a parent or, you know, anything, a friend. I was completely alone. So I stood in front of the airport outside near midnight, trying to call up hotels to find myself a bed for the night. I had to call up 25 hotels. I'm not even kidding. I called 25 hotels before I found a room. The room was very shitty. Lights didn't work. The bed, like the springs from the mattress were poking in my bones and my, my hips and my, my back and just everything hurt. I barely slept that night and I had to pay like 80 pounds for that shitty room. And of course, EasyJet's going to have to like refund me all that money because hello. I didn't choose. I didn't choose to have my flight canceled by them without them having a very good explanation as to why. So the next morning I had to wake up early. Again, I couldn't really sleep. So I went back to the airport. Yay, again. Thankfully, this time the flight left on time. Wonderful. So the plane left at 12 p.m. or like a.m. What is it? The afternoon, 12 in the afternoon. Uh, and I made my way back home. But because of the day flight, I had to drive home through traffic while already like being extremely tired. So you don't have any focus. So that means that me, a new driver, gets hyper focused while driving. And when I got home around 5 p.m. local Amsterdam time, because there's a time difference between the British Isles and mainland Europe, I got back home, couldn't sleep. I was just completely not tired anymore. Even though my body was tired and feeling dead inside, my mind was like, la la la, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm hyper-focused, I've been hyper-focused, I got ADHD now for the next five hours. So that was fun. Ordered some food, had spare ribs. I mean, what else do you do? You're too tired, you need to eat something. You know? So I had some spare ribs, and then got a lovely, amazing, long-lasting migraine attack. Because I'd been hyper-focused, barely slept for many days, and I'd been stressed out the night before. So that was wonderful. As you can imagine, I... Uh, had the trip of a lifetime that was absolutely perfect and had it ruined by a cancelled flight that just soured on everything. Which was a shame. But yeah. That was my Scotland trip in a nutshell. Don't know how else to say it. Lila is actually sleeping on my lap. I can't show you her because I don't want to disturb her. She's just asleep. So at this point, we have reached the point of you people in the chat that have joined me for this lovely impromptu out of the blue live stream. You can ask me some questions and preferably historic questions. Don't ask me questions about my personal life because I won't give you an answer. That's not what this is about, please. Just want to make sure that, that it's said, because I've had way too many personal questions in my chat in the past when I did a live stream. My love life is not yours to know. Yes, I have a boyfriend. Dot. Move on. I have a lovely life in the Netherlands. I have family. I have friends. I have things that I like to do. I have hobbies. I go to the gym a lot, and besides that, you don't need to know anything about me. I am just this blonde weirdo from Holland that likes to make videos on ancient stuff. Alright? Alright, so, now that we have that out of the way, I have Adam Mavy asking me, have I heard of the Graham Hancock slash Randall Carlson's Ancient civilization hypothesis. If so, what are my thoughts? 
Well, apparently you haven't seen my um, responses to Graham Hancock's Netflix series on my YouTube channel. I highly recommend watching those. I've only come to episode 5, and honestly, I don't think I will make episode 6, 7, and 8, because I don't think I will survive that. It feels like brain cells are dying when I watch that show. Honestly, there's so much wrong with it. I have to pause every like 10 to 20 seconds and write something down to put in my video. And it's really bad for my mental health. Let's just keep it at that. So I've made response videos to the first five episodes and probably that's going to be it. So yeah, I've heard about their theory and um i do not agree let's keep it simple as that what's my specialty well i'm officially a high school dropout and so officially i don't have a specialty but i would say my specialty has become anthropology and human like it's the entire human evolution side of it i'm not an expert but i would say that that's what i'm currently best ish at best ish hmm. I, I, I can make that a word I can make that a word I can make it work so yeah I'm best ish at that uh, I am not educated like I said I'm a high school dropout I am not educated my sister is she's a paleontologist with master's degree who's currently writing a book or wrote a book that's a non-fiction? Fiction? fiction? Non-fiction, because it's real, and it's about the dinosaurs, and how they died, and everything, and all that. All about the dinosaurs. Book about the dinosaurs, from my sister. Uh, coming out very soon. September, I think? Um, what's the oldest site for humans that I got to see in Scotland? Any of the old buildings. Didn't see any of the ancient sites. So sorry. Uh, how much I lift? Doesn't matter, because I've only been going to the gym for like, what, seven, eight months? Doesn't matter. Plus, I do everything in kilograms and not in LBS. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> How, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. How would the vision slash eyesight of ancient people differ from modern humans, if at all? I think it was probably around the same. It's not like our eyes have become worse in the past few decades or anything. It's been like this for a long time. I think people in ancient times probably also had bad, eyes, bad eyesight. And they probably got so used to it that they didn't know any better. Honestly. So, when did people start drinking cider? Um, I'm allergic to beer and wine. And I don't always like the taste of rum or whiskey. I like rum and I like whiskey. I just don't always prefer it. And ciders are just fun and fruity with alcohol. And as you can see, it's still nearly entirely full. This has been the first that I opened. I opened it right before I went to stream. Not even sure I'm gonna finish it during the stream because it's a pint. It's big. It's a lot. So, yeah. All right. Um, what else do we have to see? When is my review of episode six coming? Like I said, probably never. Honestly, probably never. What is my take on the pit? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is my take on the Picts and their relation to modern Scotland? So many people in my Picts video said that the Picts never really disappeared and that they just merged and that they're still there. And I understand that some of the Scottish people were saying that because, in a way, it is true. In a way, the Picts never disappeared. Because they merged with the Scots who came from Ireland. So, yeah. In a way, they never disappeared. Just like Neanderthals, officially, that when we see it like that, Neanderthals never really disappeared because we carry their DNA within our genomes. So, you can say that Neanderthals never went extinct. So, you can say that the Picts never went extinct. But, is there still Pict culture? No. Is there still Neanderthal culture? No. So, 
their culture went extinct. Their legacy lives on in, well, the Neanderthals in most of us, and with Picts in the descendants from the Picts and the Scots and the people who merged. And yeah, most of the people in Scotland still have some of that Pictish, her Pictish heritage, which is lovely. So yeah. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Why do I sound like a native English speaker? Well, thank you for the compliment, but I'm very Dutch. So yeah, it's lovely that people don't think that my Dutch accent is too much. Thank you very much. Um, did I go to Hadrian's Wall? No, that was too far south. Mostly stayed around Edinburgh and went all the way up north and northwest to the Highlands, which was lovely. Um, I've seen um, the Bronze Age and Neolithic sites in Dartmoor, in Dartmoor National Park. It was amazing. Some friends of mine live in Devon and they took me there and it was amazing. Loved it. Definitely will go back, but I also will go back to my friends because I don't meet up with other people out of the blue, random. It, I have to be very safe and mindful when I travel because when I travel, it's usually I travel alone. And uh, yeah, let's keep me safe. Ever considered doing a video on the origin of Proto-Indo-European? Yes. It's high on the list. Henrik, I know. It's high on the list. No, I'm no longer in Edinburgh. I'm thankfully at home. Why do I not share things of where I am at while I'm at there? It has to do with safety. So, not to sound arrogant, just trying to point that out. I'm not so trying to sound arrogant, but when you make videos on YouTube and people watch you, the people that watch you they get to know you. So you, the people watching me, you have gotten to know me over the years that you've been watching me or over the months or weeks or whatever. Um, you've been acquainted with who I am as a person and how I present myself and how I have a worldview and all that stuff. You are familiar with that. So for you, it feels like I'm close to an acquaintance or a friend. That's how you feel when you look at me, because you're familiar with me. What I say is who you, what you expect from me. At the same time, while you guys can feel that way, I have no clue who you are and what your intentions are with me. You can have great intentions, of course, but at the same time, I have to keep myself safe, which means that I cannot share and dis disclose my location while I'm at a location. The reason for this has to do with things that have happened in the past with YouTubers. There have been YouTubers that were killed by their, by a viewer that was a fan, because the fan had gotten themselves into this parasocial relationship in which they were in love or they thought they were in a relationship with like this YouTuber, even though the YouTuber has never even come across them or maybe shaken their hand once during like a meet and greet or anything. But just to make sure that people watching me will understand the gravity of this situation. I have to keep myself safe. I'm not saying that I'm at the level of being famous as the unfortunate young girl that got killed a couple years ago, but you know, you don't know where that starts and who can be trusted and who can't. So for me, keeping myself safe is number one priority. Because I would like to make videos for many decades to come, to be honest. Like, I'll be old and wrinkled by the time I will say, I think I've made enough videos in my lifetime. But I hope that you understand that I will never meet up with a fan, with a viewer. It's not going to happen. I'm probably never going to do 
a meet and greet style thing. I did this Egypt tour last year and it was amazing and there were people that bought the tour to be able to spend time with me in Egypt and Barry, one of my moderators here, was one of them. Barry has been a moderator of mine for a long time. Barry is a person that I know can be trusted, is really good, he has a beautiful wife and they brought two friends with them on this Egypt trip and it was lovely to meet them in person but at the same time, in real life, I'm me, I'm private, I need personal space. Barry and his wife and their friends understood this. They understood that I had limits to being entertaining every day. We had a lovely time and it was lovely to meet you, Barry and Sally and Heather and... Ooh... I'm flunking on the name of Heather's husband. So sorry. Like, you can tell me in the Discord. Tell me what a bitch I am. So sorry. But yeah, no. Um, I met them and it was lovely. But at the same time, there was a pressure on me. Not that they put a pressure on me, but there was pressure on me to be entertaining to the people that bought tickets to see me. And I felt that. That's a pressure that I don't really handle very well. So, I might not ever do a meet and greet. Probably, if you watch me, you might... The, the chances are, like, 99.9% .9 you will never meet me. And that's fine. Because it's all about the history and the passion for history that I'm sharing with you. I like to share the knowledge that I'm acquiring. And I would like to share that with as many people as I can. But please let me do that in my own way, in the comfort of my own home. And when I travel, I'll post where I was a day or two later. Because I have to keep myself safe. And I hope everyone understands that. So, back to questions, and probably the chat's gonna be all weird, and... I'm sorry, this might take a while. Let's see, uh... Have I watched any of the videos by Gutsik Gibbon? Yeah, I have. I have watched quite a few of her videos, and she is lovely. She's amazing. I love her stuff, and I'm still planning to reach out to her one day for a collaboration. So, yeah. If you're a fan of her as well, you can just let her know that I'm interested. I've not yet contacted her. I'm still like having that itchy nose because of the hairs that Lila put there. It's all turning red now. Mm, it's not a good look. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, no, Gutsy Gibbon, I would love to do a collaboration video with her one day. And hopefully that's gonna happen. So yeah. Um, please, could I put a link to my sister's book on a video when it comes out? I shall. I will definitely do that. So, yeah, I'll probably uh, announce it in, like, one of my videos. I'm the weirdo. Yeah, I am. There are discoveries in the Grand Canyon that looks like they came from Egypt. Do I know if anything about it? I've heard about it, and then I've heard many stories that it's a hoax. I might look into it for a video one day, for a fact or fiction video. Might be a good, you know, um, example. It might be a good fact or fiction video. Let's keep it at that. Uh, how about vodka? Vodka's nice. I like this Polish brand. Flunking on the name. This is just who I am. But might ancient people have had better night vision? No. No. Definitely not. They definitely not did not have better night vision than us. Uh, what we have is light pollution. So they were able to like navigate and use the light of the stars and Milky Way and the moon. And that was enough to illuminate wherever they needed to go. And otherwise, they would sit around the fire. But no, their night vision was Definitely not better than ours. Uh, we just have light pollution, which makes everything around it just pitch black. Because we can't use the stars and their natural light. What are the Picts? Watch my video on the Picts. It's Picts. 
But when I say pics, real quick, you just don't hear the T and it sounds like I'm saying pics, as in a picture. But I'm not. Would I consider uh, making a video about the San Agustin culture? Never heard about them, but do they live in the Neolithic or Early Bronze Age? That's the question. Because otherwise it's a bit too young for me. The Picts were already on the edge of being too young. And sometimes ancient Egypt is even on the verge of being too young. Sorry. Um... No, I'm not going back in Scotland, back to Scotland in August. Uh, me going back to Scotland will probably take another four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Because I have a lot of other countries that I want to see, plus I don't want to travel for a while after, you know. The whole ordeal of getting back home wasn't fun. Uh, did Picts use woad or henna? It's probably that they used woad, if I pronounce that correctly. Don't know. Someone says that they really like the way I say homo heidelbergensis, because I do say it in the Dutch way, heidelbergensis. Because to me, that sounds natural. Um, did I do a DNA heritage analysis on yourself? And if you did, what surprised you the most? Uh, I'm actually in the midst of doing one, but I can't really talk about that. Don't have results yet. Let's keep it at that. So, yeah, um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, and my German is uh, worse than anyone you can imagine. So if you type questions in German, I have no idea what it says. So you could probably put them through Google Translate to English and then type that to me. Because that's easier. Like, I, even though I have a German last name and I have Germanic heritage, Nein, ich spreche keine Deutsch. I think someone, this is, it's somewhat like that to say that I don't speak or read German, I think. Hmm, that sounds so wrong. Uh, what do I think of Egyptian origin story on that temple's wall? Not sure which temple wall you refer to, but you probably refer to the one near Edfu, which is a Roman type. Like, it was already in the Roman times that it was created, so it's not even like the origins origins, it's not even an old temple. Can't take it seriously then, because that's... It's not like the ancient ancient stuff of ancient Egypt, that's already more modern. So, for a modern ancient Egypt type building to tell about the origin story? Huh. Yeah, no. Like, we don't know how true that is or how false. Like, it's... No. What's my view on the origins of Slavic people? I would have to look into that, honestly. Can you do a Southern American y'all? As in a hillbilly? Y'all wanna hear me talk like a hillbilly? It's not gonna look good. So yeah, um... Let's see what else do we have. Is Amsterdam as wild as people say, is it, or is it overhyped? Amsterdam smells. It used to smell like weed, <laughs> but there's a smoking weed outside of buildings ban, so it doesn't anymore, but now it just smells like sweaty people and tourists. And I have a distaste for Amsterdam as a whole. I've been there nine times in my entire life. Eight times were mandatory with school. If that shows how much I hate Amsterdam, yeah. Go to Utrecht or Haarlem, Zaandam or Alkmaar if you want the feel of Amsterdam with like the beautiful buildings without the tourists. There still will still be tourists there, but not as obnoxious as they are in Amsterdam. And you still have good pubs and you can still ride a bike there without being killed. Cause I mean, these are great cities that I just listed. So yeah, please go there. All right. Um, what else do we have? Do I still have Boris? Hell yeah. I'm not gonna let that cute little teddy bear gray boy go. 
Like, he's still with me. He's just somewhere, sleeping, living his life. I don't ask cats to come to me when I film or when I live stream. I am of the belief that a cat can perfectly figure out what they want on their own. Like, this one currently just wants cuddles because I've been away for a couple days and she's very, very, very emotionally attached to me. She was born on my hand in 2014. I bottle fed her for the first four weeks every two, two and a half hours. I brought her to the hospital, to like the vet, the animal hospital, to the veterinary clinic when she was three weeks to keep her alive. And we also did that at four weeks, at five weeks and at seven weeks because she nearly died many times. So she's very used to being on my body, skin to skin. She's used to getting her warmth from me. She's used to feeling safe and secure while in my arms or near my neck or like you just saw. So she likes to be with me a lot, but she also knows that when I film and I put the camera stand up, that I'm working, that I'm being focused. And when I'm being focused, she's not going to get the attention that she wants. So that means that usually when I film, she just doesn't give an um, F to say it like that. And she just goes somewhere in the room and sleeps. In the last video, she decided to hop on my lap for two times. We're like, what? She's suddenly doing that again? Yeah, she suddenly is. But yeah, this is just Lila and, and Boris. They're just living their life. And I like a cat to be able to like choose where they go, what they do. I'm not going to call them to be with me all the time. It might be fun for you to see, but like, honestly, yeah, no. Um, let's see, let's see, what else do we have? Do not put your paw on the table. All right, thank you. Um. Carthaginians travel to South America. I've never heard that idea before. Me neither. No idea. So yeah. Do not put your paw on the table, I said, honey. You listen to me. Hmm? Where's the mama? You can get cuddles. Thank you so much for the super chat, Ivan. I it took me a while to like scroll down again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Are you just gonna like, just, just sit, relax. Uh, YouTube just played an advert for me during this live stream, the second I have seen during this stream. Why? Oh, I actually had the choice of enabling or disabling adverts in the middle of a live stream um i probably accidentally enabled that instead of disabling it like like i like i said before i am very shitty at live streams i still haven't figured out how to do them correctly so i'm sorry guys <laughs> i mess up it as well sometimes so yeah um no Klee Con 2024. No, exactly, Henrik. No Klee Con. I'm so sorry. So, Barry got on the A-list. Well, I mean, Barry made sure that he was there when he heard it, that I was doing that one tour, and he was lovely enough to join me. Paul! Yes! Paul was his name. Oh my god, like, I honestly just flunked on that so hard. Just tell Heather and Paul that I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please, let me apologize to them. I feel so bad. Oh my god. Uh. Whoa, 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 that went too fast. Wow, I just went all the way back. Oh my god, oh my god. That was not the way to go. No, click. Okay, well, we're back at where we're... I'm just looking at the chat and I'm like, whoa, it just skipped all the way down. Not a good thing to do. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Did I visit Scarabre on the Orkney Islands? Unfortunately, I haven't. I've only made one video about it and I'm probably gonna recreate that video very, very soon because I'm still not 
I'm not happy with the original video that I put out. It was uh, when I just started my channel and I wasn't really, really bubbly and happy and being able to like present something in a good storyline fashion and fun to watch and fun to listen to. It's mostly just dry information and it needs to be updated. Yeah, so I'm probably going to recreate Mascara Bray in Orkney video. I will, however, say that one day I am going to visit Scarabre. But, like I said, I'm not going back to Scotland for another couple years. And that, that's fine. That's fine. I've, I've at least been there once now. Um, ba -ba -ba -bam, what else do we have? Kaylee, maybe we can find you in a Find Kaylee book like Find Waldo, a cartoon book of you hiding in crowds at ancient sites of oh, now Frankenstein. Thank you for the super chat. That's a fun idea. I actually like that idea. I'm probably going to have to have people like either Photoshop me in crowds or having to take pictures of me in crowds. I normally wait for like a long time to not have people in my pictures that I post on like online or anything. I don't like the way that... Mm, yeah, no. I just don't like people ruining my shots. Especially when other people like pose and you see in your picture that someone in the background is like posing for a video and I'm like, oh, I cringe. I just, I really don't want to have you in my pictures. Like jumping around and making all these weird movements and I'm like, mm, don't. So usually I just wait a long time at a site to get the perfect shot. Have I seen Nessie? No, unfortunately I haven't. Nessie didn't show himself. Herself. Himself? Herself? Themself. Thanks for the awesome interview with the homona lady riding star, <laughs> rising star cave guy. You mean Dr. Lee Berger, Richard Perkins. <laughs> He's an amazing person and it was amazing being able to interview with him. Uh, being able to interview him, I should say. My English is going damn. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. Boop, 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 boop. How did I learn to speak English? Watching a lot of Cartoon Network when I was young. My mom spoke a little bit of English here and there in the house. And movies in English, mostly. That's the basis. And the rest was just me being interested in the language and just googling everything the moment google became a thing when i was young and uh yeah if i didn't know how to pronounce uh, something i would just uh ask someone from england to send me like a voice recording an audio recording of like how it should be pronounced and everything so yeah, mostly self-taught i think from watching things how can you tell if bob spells his name backwards well you can't that's Bob's secret. Uh, oh my god, it went... Well, oh no, no, it, it didn't go all the way down. It just looked like it did. Uh, could the ancients see the color blue? Probably. Because the light spectrum they saw is the same light spectrum as we see. It's not like the light, the colors changed. Um, that has to do with like particles and things like that. and thing, yeah, it's Something science-y. So, no idea. <laughs> are the human fossils... Are the are there human fossils or just bones? Ancient human bones are fossils. Or do you mean like coprolite? Fossil poop from ancient humans? Yes. There are those as well. <laughs> um... Doggerland, what do you find most interesting about it? The fact that it uh, has disappeared and it's now currently sitting at the bottom of the North Sea. What's there? I just want to find it. Like, dry the entire North Sea, put land between me and England back, and just, yeah, it would be lovely. Uh, where did I get my sense of humor? Lila, 
Lila. Lila. Apparently, I have a sense of humor. Did you know? Did, did you keep that a secret from me? I can be fun. Wow. Wow. Uh, I have no idea. Honestly, I'm just me. I'm a bit weird. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Mm. Let's see. Sundaland. Please do a video on it. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, if I'll look into it and if it has like something that I find interested, interesting, it, it, it could be that I will do that. Have I heard anything about the ancient cities in northeast Afghanistan along the dry riverbed? Nope. Haven't heard about it. Uh, you can join my Discord and send me a name or like an article or anything and the moderators there will look at it and they will quickly probably probably quickly scan it and let me know if it's a good video idea or not you could try that um henrik or barry in the chat will probably join uh, share the discord join link within a few minutes usually henrik is like lightning fast with this stuff so i mean I'm putting my faith in you, Henrik. The witch is also uh, here in the chat. He is T -S, T S C T H, but I know him as Henrik, and I always call him Henrik anyway. So like, he knows. I know. I know he knows. We know. He's a good friend from uh, another country that I've known for many uh, years. He's from Denmark. All right. Your kitty cat is listening very intently to every word you are speaking. She does that. And she also does it when I sing. Which I don't do as much anymore, but I mean, I still do it every once in a while. And then she comes and cuddles. Doesn't matter if she was asleep or not. She just comes straight and cuddles. What are your thoughts on the idea that the parting of the Red Sea might have been caused by a Pre-tsunami outflowing of the ocean caused by the destruction of the island of Thera. I got no clue. No idea. Never heard anything about that. So, no idea. So sorry. Like, I, I like history and I'm passionate about it. and But I don't have all the knowledge about everything. Forgive me. Please. I'm just me. I'm a blonde weirdo from Holland. What else do we have? Uh, someone says I could be wrong, but I believe... Wait, I have... The chat, again, went gone. Uh... What, what, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, oh, yeah, here. Wow, took me a while to find that back. I could be wrong. Richard Perkins says I could be wrong, but I think 30,000 years ago we had five or six hominid species alive at the same time. No. No. Because the Neanderthals disappeared around 35 to 32,000 years ago at the very, like, closest to us. So, no, there have not been Neanderthals found later than 32,000 years ago. Also, no Denisovans. And all the other Homo species were already extinct by that point. So, definitely not true. I'm sorry. I'm not sure where you heard it, but it's not, not the case. I'm so sorry. Uh, are you able to get your GED and go to college we don't really have a GED thing here I could apply for a 21 plus exam because I'm over the age of 21 and then I could buy I could pay a shitload of money to go to school which takes nearly up like it will take up nearly all of my time and then I won't be able to make videos for the sake of getting a piece of paper that says diploma or certificate and then not finding a job in the field. Sorry, I'm not gonna go to college. 
I prefer doing what I do right now at this point in my life. I don't feel the need that I need to educate myself beyond because I can be educated by the internet. Oh, did you do a, little, a big stretch? You did such a cute little stretch, honey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was such a good stretch. I have to be proud of her real good stretch. Like, honestly, this kid is nearly nine. She owed. Did you see any Scottish wildcats or red squirrels? Unfortunately, I didn't see either. I did drive uh, through parts of woods that are known for having red squirrels with one of the tour buses one of the days that I was there, but unfortunately, I didn't see any. I did see deer, which was dope. And of course, highland cows, but we also have highland cows in my hometown where I was born and grew up in because they were gifted to that town by the Scottish government because we helped them with something, something, I don't know. It was something like the nature part of that is just perfect for these highland cows and we got like 20 or 30 of them back when I was like two or three years old and currently there are more than a hundred in that nature reserve. They're thriving, wonderful. So, Highland cows to me weren't really, you know, a big thing. So sorry. When I stub my toe in the morning, what do you say? One of the Dutch swear words. It's probably a disease. And no, it's not cancer, because I do not swear with cancer ever. But yeah, some Dutch people do. I swear with other diseases, and I prefer not to say them. Because that's private. Let's keep it at that. All right, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, the, the, the Alan, uh, Rock Eyed Man. Uh, I didn't feel attacked by you saying that there was an advert in the stream. Uh, absolutely not. I did not feel uh, attacked in any way. It's just that I honestly think that I did not disable that even though that used to never be an option because it didn't exist. I think that they implemented that ever since I did my last last live stream, what, maybe nearly a year ago now? I haven't done a live stream in such a long time that I think they had updated that and I, I think I messed that up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> David, David, why did you start YouTube? Well, I was on disability pay, I was just depressed, I was at home, I was already looking up scientific thingies for myself and especially surrounding history and architecture and one day I woke up and I decided, you know what, I like Outlander so much and they talk about the stone circle, Craig Nadun, does that exist? Unfortunately it doesn't, but it was based on Colonish in Scotland and therefore I went to find information on Cullinish in Scotland and I found this extensive archaeology paper like about the dig of Cullinish. It was wonderful and I decided to write a script from the information that I have found and started to film that, uploaded it and there you have it, my very first YouTube video that is currently privated because the audio is just horrendous and the background music is way too loud and I'm very not proud of that video maybe I will one day unprivated when I get to like 500,000 subscribers for a joke like here have my very 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 first video me being an idiot on camera probably maybe one day so if you can get me to like 500,000 subscribers then you can maybe see that very first video have I ever participated in archaeology or paleontology dig? I have not. Unfortunately, I can say I have not, but I'm also not in the field. So, yeah. Um, what do we have? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Did I have a favorite theory on Nessie? No, not really. What is my native language? It's Dutch. My mother tongue is Nederlands, and in my dagelijks leven spreek ik Nederlands. En alleen voor de Nederlanders in de chat is dit te begrijpen. 
So what I just said is that my native language is Dutch and that in my day-to-day -day life I speak Dutch and that only the people who are Dutch were able to understand that Dutch bit I just did. So yeah, cheers. Proust, I should say in Dutch. Proust. Um, am I a musician? No, I just sang a lot when I was young. Besides that, not really a musician. I just like to sing at times. So yeah, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, wait, the chat sometimes does that. Alrighty. What brand of cider is that? This is Kopperberg. Cherry. So, no idea if it, what, what it's classified as. I think it, it, it's nice. That's just all I know. It's nice. It tastes really good. So yeah. Um, what else do we have? Any fun questions? Um, do you think they could have appeared in ancient times, crop circles? Probably not, because they're not made by aliens, they're definitely made by people. I mean, let's do this thing for fun. Let's say you're an alien, you're from outer space. You make your way to Earth, a planet with water and people and, and oxygen and all these other wonderful, amazing, fan, fantastic chemicals. And we have life here. And you're an alien and you come here and all you do is make a crop circle and then leave. Of course, I mean, that would have been the biggest joke in the universe, but at the same time, a waste of their time and resources. They're not made by aliens. They're definitely made by people. So now I don't think that crop circles back then were a thing. Because there weren't any people making them. Right? So. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, I did a burp and it was silent. Henrik and, and Barry will know that that's rare. Normally, whenever I burp, it's like very loud and I'll sound like a drunken sailor. I just did a lady burp. I can actually burp like a lady? Awesome. Learned something new about myself today. Um, what else do we have? <laughs> did I see Homo Scotlandieses? Okay, that one was funny. I uh, I like that Bokar, Bokar. That was fun. That was fun. As far as I know, Dutch drivers drive on the right side of the road. Did you have much trouble adapting to driving in the UK? Oh, I did not drive there. That's why I went with tour buses. I just got my license back in April. I still don't feel confident enough as a driver to do anything like that like no mm -mm -mm. i mean i i'm not a bad driver definitely not i'm a good driver and i'm very confident behind the wheel in my own country when everything is uh to the right whenever i need to switch gears because i drive a manual uh spunky white as i said many times my cat sniffed near my nose earlier today and that means that there had been a cat hair here and I'm actually allergic to cats many people don't know this I'm actually really allergic to cats especially their fur and I will still cuddle with them all day long it's just that when one of the hairs gets close to my nose it gets really irritated it is very itchy a burning itch like it's you can't just not touch it yeah so I'm sorry, but like, I don't do drugs. I understand, I'm not a fun Dutch person, but I just don't. So, yeah. 
and I already said like five times in the live stream that it was because of cat hair. Can't help it. And yes, I do have a lot of energy, but that's because I'm live streaming and I'm actually uh, nervous. I'm always nervous when I live stream. My heart rate is way through the roof at the moment and I'm very hot because I can't cool down because my heart rate is this high because I get nervous whenever I sit and talk to you people and it's just not what I normally do. Uh, my friend is Dutch and he doesn't seem to age. What is your secret? Potatoes. I think the secret to anything Dutch that is weird to other people, like how tall we are and all that stuff, I think it all has to do with our potatoes. And the soil in which the potatoes are grown. And um, I still get carded whenever I buy alcohol in a store. Even though they're allowed to ask me until the age of 25. I'm turning 32 in November! Yep, I'm old. I'm very old. One day I'll be so old that I could actually make videos on myself. Because I'll be ancient history. Mind is blown. What do you know about Indonesia's ancient history? I don't know too much. But I do know that uh, Homo erectus went there way back in the day. A couple, like, million years ago-ish. So, um, yeah. I definitely want to look more into the ancient, ancient history of Indonesia and their le a legacy and heritage that they left. Like, what can we find? I should probably look into that more. I could maybe make a video on, like, that side of the world and the species that used to roam there, like in one video-ish? Maybe. If you want to see anything like that, let me know. In the comments. In the chat. I don't know. Like, I... <laughs> Henrik, T-S-C-T-H, <clears throat> says, Glee burps are like a lion on a megaphone. Honestly, he's not lying. <laughs> Oh, he's not, he's not lying at all. I wish he was lying about that, though. <laughs> so I'll try to um, not burp. Mm. I know that most cars in the UK have, like, um, manual transmissions. It's just that I'm still sitting on the wrong side of the car. And I'm not used to that. And I haven't had my license for long. So, honestly, I might never drive there in a country where I have to drive on the wrong side of the road. So sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the AD thing is. Like, I don't know... All things. Ah, uh, Julian Bailey, am I a fan of the Bright Inside YouTube channel? No! I was attacked horrendously by the creator of that channel back on my birthday in November. Because I had liked some tweets on Moss, because there were a lot of tweets about, like, the Graham Hancock new Netflix TV show, and then I liked a lot of tweets to later find them and look at the information and form my own opinion. And then the creator behind the channel Bright Inside went onto my Twitter, into my liked tweets, and tried to cancel me for liking tweets that said things about white supremacy uh, surrounding... Graham Hancock, even though I didn't necessarily agree with them, I just looked at the tweets and I wanted to save them, and the only way to do that is if you like them, so that you can go back into your liked tweets and find them back. So no, I don't like him. And I am not a fan of him. He attacked me on multiple occasions afterwards as well, and he tried to send his followers to cancel me. 
And guess I lost about a thousand Twitter followers when that happened. And then people from the archaeological community and the scientific community figured out that this was happening and they all started to follow me. And then I grew by another 5,000 Twitter followers. So thank you for the people loving history and working in the field of science and archaeology and paleontology and the historians on Twitter because holy hell, you all made me feel loved and appreciated when someone really tried to cancel me with all they had. And uh, I, I remember crying myself to sleep on my birthday last November when this was going down because I honestly went to bed thinking, this is it. This is my YouTube. This is my business that I started. This is my life now. I'm done. I'm cancelled. And then the scientific community, the archaeologists, the historians, they all came to my rescue and I cannot thank them enough. So yeah. Next question. Yeah. Um, people say they thought that I was like 26. Well, thanks. But yeah, no, really nearly 32. Homo erectus in San Francisco. Now that's something I would like to see. Can I make a video on ancient cats and dogs? I made a video on the domestication of dogs which goes back quite a long time ago. I haven't made a video on the domestication of cats, but that's mostly because cats domesticated themselves. They are the only animal to do so. Cheers to cats. So. Uh, I'm already back in the Netherlands, Thomas McCrory, and I didn't go to Kilmartin Glen or Maze Howe because Orkney is way way up there north and uh, this trip was already expensive enough and it's not like I've got money growing from my back so I'm sorry oh are we hissing to each other don't fight I'm sorry we might get a wrestling match in the background that you can only hear not see I said not see it's not the other word that has to do with Germany mm -hmm. no don't fight. No. No. All right. So the wrestling match has been diffused for now. All right. Um, I like Joe Rogan as a person, as a presenter. I like his podcast. I like some of the um, subjects that he's had and that he's talked about. I like some of the people that he's had on the show. I used to watch him back in the day on Fear Factor. Loved him. So I like him as a presenter. All right. Uh, am I a Scorpio? Yes, I am. Let's see. I'm not sure if anyone could adapt to driving on the wrong side of the road, but according to Johanna James, which is still my friend, let's be frank here, me and Johanna are still friends and we still support each other in our channels and we know that we have different views of the ancient world, but we love the fact that we have this difference because it makes our conversation so interesting. So, according to her, because she has, um, she lives in the UK, so she drives on the left side, but she used to have, uh, she used to drive a lot in France. And that's, of course, driving on the right side, which is the right side. But according to her, the switch is really easy. You just have to do it, but it's very easy according to her. So I'm not sure. So yeah. Um, what else do we have? For questions because I think I have like 30 13 ish minutes before I will quit this live stream which video about archaeology was the funniest to make oh the dong of humanity the people oh the video about like the depictions of ancient dongs that was definitely the most fun video to make and film especially because that video was very long and it was hard to make. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a child. But honestly, I had the most fun with that video. Honestly. 
Um, what do we have? Ooh, do, 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 do. Um, does anyone have fun questions about like history or anthropology, human evolution, anything like this? I have no idea what the pedal order is in cars in the UK. What is my favorite period, period slash area? My favorite period will always remain the Neolithic. The Neolithic with the megalithic builders. Yeah, that's just my favorite period. And the area wherever you can find a megalithic building dating from the Neolithic. I can be very very simple like this i'm so sorry oh josh lowry thank you so much for the super sticker that's really kind of you um what else do we have do you like dr alice roberts the anthropologist and tv presenter i love dr alice roberts she's incredible and i like the fact that she has the pink hair and then we have my sister who's a paleontologist and also has pink hair so she reminds me of my sister even though she's a bit older but i love her shows and um i learn a lot from her whenever i see something that she's in and i tend to like just stare at the screen and want to take everything in that she says i love her so yeah uh what else do we have thoughts on big food i don't think they exist i'm so sorry but i just don't are those eyeglasses, window pane lens, or very low power? I have no idea what else, what you mean. I, they're just glasses. I need them to see. I got astigmatism and I can't see very well when things are further away. It just becomes blurry. So, um, yeah. What are my thoughts on Bigfoot? Again, don't think they exist. This is Lila, the lady. Boris is actually on the couch. Boris! He's looking at me like, woman? Hell no. So like I said, I will try. I'm just not going to make him come if he doesn't want to come. If he will, he will. But also, they nearly fought earlier, moments ago. So like, hmm. uh, Have I done anything on Italy? Well, I talked about the Campi Flegri volcano that might have played a role in the disappearance of the Neanderthals. Which is Italian. So I'm not sure if that's Italian enough for you, but I mean, did speak about that. And besides that, I can't really remember if I did. I've been making videos for a long time now. It's I, I got a, like 183 on the channel. Hey, Boris! Okay, so we put Lila away for a moment. No. Lila, it's his turn. Come. Come, Boris. Let's see if this works. I'll help. Ugh. He, Boris is like the cutest cat ever. He's like a teddy bear. But let's be honest, with British short hairs, they honestly breathe the intelligence out of them. This cute boy has one and a half brain cell. And I'm not even kidding. He do. He really do. But he cute. Hi. Yeah, you mag gaan. And he only likes a short cuddle anyway. So yeah, that was Boris. He showed himself. Yay! Applause for Boris. Boris, you are amazing. Yay! Boris. Woo -hoo. Okay. And uh, my shirt has just become completely white with his gray hairs. I just see hairs flying around everywhere. Wonderful. It's summertime. He's shedding as uh, an insane cat. All right. Next question. When did people start ear piercing? A long time ago, I assume. Honestly, a really, really long time ago, I assume. Did Neanderthal weave cloth? I don't know. But it's a good question, actually. I might have to actually ask some people that. Some Academics, I mean. <laughs> mm 
With ear piercing, they probably meant earrings, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, pa -pa -pa -pam. Why are there so many stone circles across Europe? Does this imply widespread communication and cultural exchange? David DB, I would say yes. That does imply widespread communication and cultural exchange. For sure. Because there's a reason why they are so similar. And we know that the Neolithic people from ancient Britain and Western Europe, like so the British Isles and the other parts of Western Europe, traded with the Middle East and the Mediterranean. Some of them tra traded with the Middle East, some of them traded with cultures near the Mediterranean, some of them even traded with cultures from Egypt. I mean, yeah, it was widespread. It has to have been widespread. Did ancient apes in South Africa bury their dead? Is this true? Which ancient apes do you mean? If you talk about Homo naledi, they're not as ancient as you think, but at the same time, they, only, they are the oldest burials that we have found. So yeah. Uh, what has my sister been working on lately? Is she still in Sweden? She still works for the University of Sweden, but she currently lives in the Netherlands. Moved here a couple months ago. Yay, got my sister back in the country. She lives on the other side of the country, though. It's not like she is close to me. Um, but yeah, no, she still works on things. I don't know what I'm allowed to disclose or... <laughs> so, I mean, she just works on things for the university still. PhD, uh, something, 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 right? Um, if she sees this, sorry, I don't know. What else to like? I don't, I'm not sure what I can share or not. So yeah, yeah, Boris has grown. He's uh, not baby anymore. He's nearly five kilos. I got him at like a kilo and a half. He's nearly five kilos and he's not even one. What the hell? Like, can he stop growing already? Um, why was aquatic ape hypothesis not debunked? It had only two supporters. I, I, I don't know. Like, I have many people asking me to do a video on the aquatic ape theory. And, um, well, I haven't. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I should do a video on historic mistakes. Well, I can only do things that are older than the... Like, I do I do things that are like human evolution, Neolithic, early Bronze Age, and then... <sighs> usually that's where it ends. Maybe every once in a while when something in the Netherlands is found and it's thought to be... It, like, it's possibly older and goes back into maybe Bronze Age, then I will make a video on it, and I did that once, and then it turned out to be like uh, Middle Ages. So, I mean, when they did a like a follow-up research campaign and then I did a follow-up video and we figured out that, oh, hey, this was the Middle Ages. And I'm like, oh, hey, it's not Neolithic or Bronze Age. So, actually shouldn't be on my channel at all. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... What else do we have? Have I heard of the stone fences on the bottom of the lake, on on the bottom of Lake Michigan? I've not heard of that. Sounds dope. Is your country the size of the USA state of Pennsylvania? I know wood collectors over there. My country is tiny. You can uh, Google uh, the Netherlands map inside US, and then you can see the size. We tiny. We really, really, really tiny. Um, how far away is the other side of the country? I mean, I could get to my sister's house in less than an hour and a half. Ish? No, I think about an hour and a half. Something like that. Within that. And that's like because I can go over the dike. Um, if it was more south that she lived, it would have been like two hours. Max two and a half. Because you can leave the country from the most northern point up until like the very, 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 very most southern eastern point in like less than three hours. That's the size of my country. East time. Um, 
saw sister on TED Talk the other day. That was cool. Yeah, she was uh, a presenter at TED, X, TED Talk in Stockholm uh, back in April, I think that was. What about a series where you travel the world to explore sites and interview specialists? I mean, I would love to do that. Anyone wants to call like the History Channel or Discovery or National Geographic, I would love to do that. Absolutely. And then probably drink a cider with the person I just interviewed for the fun of it. I would love to do that. I just don't think that I'm at TV level anytime soon, if ever. I'm just me. I'm just, I'm just clean. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Do I know about the sea henge off the coast of Norfolk? I've heard about it. I've seen it. It's lovely. And maybe one day I'll make a video on it. Hey. Any news on the collab? Uh, Joachim Kilhammer. I think you are referring to the Inside.Archaeology collab with Rachel from the Inside.Archaeology channel that used to be Rachel and Mundegs. She and I have a, a video idea planned and uh, we're probably going to be able to film that in September. Can't say anything more than that. Um, yeah. Have I done anything about the Bronze Age Collapse? Well, no, because the Bronze Age Collapse happened at the end of the Bronze Age and I focus on the Stone Age and a little bit on early Bronze Age. So the Bronze Age collapse is too young for me. Because, I mean, if I'm gonna, like, cover all that span of history, that's a bit too much for just one person, one teeny tiny person, that's me. Wales is smaller than the Netherlands, Julian Bailey. Now I have to look this up. How large is Wales? Wales is 20.779 square kilometers. 20,779 square kilometers. All right. Wales is indeed smaller. Like half. Awesome. But also, the Netherlands is like a completely country of its own with its own government and its own monarchy. So that's why I see it as like super tiny. So yeah, what else do we have? Netherlands is tiny, but last I heard their food production is more than Canada. Um, our food production is one of the largest in the entirety of Europe. We export more food than we sell in the entire country. Like we export more to other countries and like um, almost all the food that is produced here, gets exported. And then when I want to buy a cucumber, a simple frickin' cucumber, I buy a cucumber that's from Spain or Morocco or Egypt. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Don't we grow these? Like, maybe 50 yards from the supermarket? But when I want to buy one, it comes from like another country. I buy potatoes in a Dutch grocery store, and 9 out of 10 times the potatoes were grown in Egypt or Morocco. What? Aren't we known for our own potatoes? So sometimes I go to a farmer, and I buy a bag of potatoes, and then I start growing them myself again. Might actually have to do that again, because this is not fun. Do I have any interest in language development? I have, but, like, I don't really understand languages. Oh, there's been more cat hairs to my nose. Like, oh, it's so itchy and it burns. I need to take a shower very soon because it's, like, allergies are ooh at the moment. Have you burned the clutch in your car? No. Like I said, I'm a pretty good driver. Honestly. Sending Kaylee a proper beer glass? No, please don't. It's in glass already, and I'm Dutch. I don't need to be, it to be in a separate glass. It's in glass. I can drink just straight from the bottle. Can you share any less known facts about the Natufian culture? I can't, because I don't know too much about them, unfortunately. I wish I do, but then I would have to make time to read up on them 
and to make a video on them. But then it's like, what do I make videos on? It's not just what I'm interested in. It's like what's currently happening in the world and what I'm interested in. And yeah. Um, I'm going to study archaeology at Leiden in September. Any tips for a first year archaeology student? I've not been an archaeology student. But you can actually ask Rachel from Insight.Archaeology because she has been. So, I highly recommend you reaching out to her, asking her about it. Mm. The Netherlands are cheating though. Y'all expanded your country into the sea using for forbidden water magic. Oh yes, we did, Henrik. Oh yes, we did. <laughs> Which is lovely. We have forbidden water magic, where we turn water into land. Uh, did you go to the Isle of Skye? Unfortunately, I did not. Yeah, no, uh, I was only there for five days, which two of those days were already travel days, so... We have cat again. Hi, Boris! Come on! No, okay. He's like, he puts his paw on my leg, as in, hey, woman, I would like attention and cuddles. And then I'm like, okay, you come for cuddles. And then he's like... My brain cell not working. So, I mean, he's stuck on um, the Wheel of Doom or something in his mind. <laughs> have I tried ancient cuisines? I have not, unfortunately. So... Um, <laughs> is there not a collapse in every age? I think so. Something like that. Uh, are you familiar with the YouTube channel Not Just Bikes? He made me believe the Netherlands is utopia. I mean, nothing is really in a utopia, but at the same time... I think the Netherlands as a country, with our unique nature and the super flat landscape, um, I think it, it, it can look a bit utopian for sure. Yeah, I can see that. Um, is it the most beautiful nature slash scenery that I've ever seen in my life. No. No, the Netherlands isn't that amazing to me. But at the same time, when I drive around and it's like the middle of April and I drive on the highway and I look to my left or I look to my right and I see all the beautiful, colorful flower fields with all the tulips. Yeah. It can look utopian, and I could fall in love again with my country, for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else do we have. Have you heard of the ancient fossilized forest off of the coast of Wales' Forth Beach? North Beach, I think you mean. But yeah, I've heard about that. And we also have more of those along the coast of the UK. I think there was one around... Mm, I'm not sure where it was. Um... Doesn't matter exactly where. I think Norfolk, but um, I might be sure be re, 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 I might be wrong about this, but yeah, no. Um, I know about the ancient fossilized forests because they used to be the forests that were on Doggerland back when Doggerland was still above the North Sea. So yeah, I um read quite a bit about them during my uh, Doggerland video making. Well, about uh, two years ago now, nearly. Wow, that's nearly two years ago that I made a Doggerland video. I probably need to new make a new one and uh, put in the information that back then I didn't know or like didn't put in anything. So yeah, probably Doggerland part two on the channel in a couple months. I had a cat with a one blinking brain cell. Boris is like that. He's really not smart. Did I visit any castles in Scotland? Yes, I did. I actually did. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Which castle was this? This is Linlithgow. I see. I've, I've seen a, a Linlithgow. And I went to 
Let's see, let's see, let's see, which was this. This was also in Linlithgow, but that was Linlithgow Castle, and the one that also served as uh, Fort William in the TV show Outlander. I can't, I can't, I'm completely flunking on names, like, pfft. honestly, I'm still too tired and a bit dead inside. So, Black Castle, Blackness Castle, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something, something. And I saw... Um, that's also just called Unnamed Road in my phone. Why are we like this? Uh, Midhope Castle, which uh, served as a Lallybroch in uh, Outlander. That's also what I saw. Yes. So I've been to three separate castles, which was lovely. Um... So yeah, uh, do Homo and a lady live in the inner earth? No, why would they? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, yearly Doggerland videos, probably not, but probably every few years that I'll put more information about there uh, in there, because whenever I find it, I can. Uh, if I find new information, I'll make a new video, and it's been like two years. So, I think it's time to put in more new information that has can come out since. The most ancient known stone tools are thought to be 3.3 million years old, and were discovered at a site called Lomekwi 3, also in Kenya. Yep, John Darwin, that's very true. Uh, the, Lomequi, the Lomequian stone tool industry that I actually covered in my video of ancient inventions of stone tools. Hey. Uh, I made that video about a year ago. So yeah, be careful that the Brits understand that you want to see dogger land and not dogging land. I know. I know. Many fun comments on that video of British people. Thinking that the video was going to be something else. Love, love that. But yeah, that was uh, very much fun. Okay. So, uh, I've actually been going on for more than I actually planned to do. Because normally I plan to do my live streams for about two hours. And it's been over two hours, actually, because it's uh, 11 past 10, and I started around 8, even though the first couple minutes had, like, no sound. And I'm sorry about that, because um, always, something always goes wrong. Can't help it. But if you like my videos and you want to see more videos like them, make sure you are subscribed. And preferably with the bell icon turned on so you get notifications. And if you don't get notifications, even though you have turned it on in YouTube, you actually have to go into your phone settings to let YouTube send you notifications because most people have that turned off by default. So if you haven't been getting notifications on your phone, check that and then make sure you put notifications for all of my videos in YouTube. So please do that. If you would like to support me, you can become a channel member or you can become a patron, patron, patreon, a patron at patreon.com slash history with Kaylee, or you can become a channel member, uh, channel member, wow, I can't talk. Uh, you can become a channel member here on the channel by clicking that button, become channel member or whatever it is here. And like, uh, YMCA. No idea. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I enjoyed the stream and I would like to thank everyone sending me super chats and supporting me. It really means a lot to me. And I know I say this in every video, but I really, really mean it. I am serious when I say that. I had a great trip in Scotland. I liked sharing and be being able to like share that with you all. And I enjoy answering your questions and I enjoy hanging out with you in this fashion where I feel safe like I said probably never gonna happen a meet and greet with me I'm so sorry that's just not my style why do you think I make videos in English like less than two percent of all my viewers are Dutch like I think it's at this point at 1.5 percent of all my viewers 
being from the Netherlands. I like it that way because then I can still live my normal life. And yeah, I don't ever, I actually never wanted to become famous in any way, shape or form. Still don't. And it feels weird to me that there are people from all over the world that watch me here on YouTube and that like me and support me and it just it's mind boggling to me that y'all do. So thank you, but at the same time it's scary as well when you've never seen yourself as wanting that for necessarily. So yeah. Um Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the fun questions. And thank you all for giving me questions about like history and, and all that stuff and not personal questions. This was, I think this was one of the uh, first ones that was uh, actually um, awesome. So yeah, thank you all. And I'll see you probably next time. And uh, yeah, this week, Sunday video. No idea what the subject is going to be yet, but I'll figure it out. I'll see you on Sunday. 2 p.m. EST, 8 p.m. Amsterdam time. I'll be there. Are you there, Jay, with the premiere? See you there.